you, my friends, are looking at the best fitting face mask on YouTube. This is my 13th mask video. I've been making this mask better and better every time I put a video out. And now I believe I have achieved the best fitting face mask to date. The CDC states on their website that you must have a close fitting mask in order for it to even be any protection at all for anyone. Pay close attention to my mask inflate and deflate as I breathe. That is a good sign. That tells me I have a really good fitting mask. If it didn't do that, my mask would be worthless. Take note, no fog on my glasses. Now that is due to the foam that I insert with the wire as I make the mask. Full tutorial of the best fitting face mask just ahead. Hi friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. 13 mask videos as of today. That's a lot of mask videos. But I learned a lot along the way and I'm going to share it all with you. Everything you need to make this mask and all the supply links, they're in the description box below. Remember, if you gained knowledge from any of my videos, please subscribe and like this video and share it as much as you can. All right, guys, let's get busy. You wouldn't think that printing out a pattern would be so complicated, but it is sometimes. If your printer settings are not set properly, you can mess up any pattern that you print off. So what we're gonna do here is look at this two inch mark. It's there for a reason. It has to match exactly at two inches with your ruler when you print it out. If it doesn't, if it's just a bit smaller, then you are going to have problems. But here, my printer printed this exactly. Now let me show you something earlier that I caught. I was printing something out and I checked my two inch mark and you'll notice it was smaller. Even that little smidgen of air can cause your pattern to not turn out. Now that that's taken care of, let's go ahead and cut our pattern piece out that we need, either the universal regular or the universal large. You don't have to do this step, but I'm just showing you how I fold it in half in the wing area where the dart is going to go, and I'm going to just make a one inch mark, just as a visual, so you can see how far down that we are going to dart these. The CDC recommends that we use 100% premium cotton fabric when we make a fabric mask at home. Here I'm showing you a batik fabric. It is known to be premium and it is woven, it is tightly woven, which makes it ideal for mask making. The other fabric here that I'm going to use today is a quilter's cotton. I find the mix of these two types of fabrics the best in mask making due to the fact that the batik is very lightweight, perfect for these summer months that are coming up. You will need approximately two sets of fabric at 13 inches by eight and a half inches. Now, if you're going to make the large mask that I have on the printout, this amount of fabric will cover that as well. With right sides together, go ahead and fold your fabric in half. Pay attention to the fold mark on the pattern piece. You're going to lay where it says fold on where you folded your fabric and then you're just going to cut around the pattern piece as you see me do here. You should end up with two pieces just like this. The next step is the darts. We are going to put a one inch dart at a quarter inch each on every wing. So that's four wings and that's four darts. Here I'm going to use a clip right at the end of where that one inch is supposed to end, so I kind of know as a guide. Now we never want to use pins because pins make more holes for viruses to get in. You're going to do this on all four wings, the front and the inside of the mask. Be sure to tie off the tails 
at the end of each dart that you make. I usually do two tie-offs in a knot so that way they won't unravel. Take note of the medical mask on the right-hand side of your screen. Do you see how the pleats go downward? There's a reason for that. It's so that viruses and things in the air scale off of it and away from it. If they were in the opposite direction, anything could just settle right on the tops of those pleats if they were pointing upward. So our mask is no different. So on the inside of the front of the mask, be sure to iron the dart in the upward position. And then the other piece of fabric, you're going to do it in the opposite direction. Sew a continuous stitch around both curves. This is what it should look like around that curved area after you've sewn. Now what we're going to do is just take that front piece and we're going to iron the seam allowance to one side. This will make more sense to you in the next step. Lay approximately two inches of heat bond across that seam area, just about a quarter of the way down, right on that humpy area right there where the seam is. Very carefully, just hold it in place, take it to your machine, and just top stitch just that two inch part where the heat bond is. Be sure to top stitch the side that has the extra seam allowance on it. This is what it should look like, just about two inches approximately top stitched. This tiny piece of heat bond will aid us later when we want to connect the front and back together so it doesn't flop during washings. The heat bond also helps us cover up a lot of that stitching that was done in the center. Assemble all of the nose pieces as you see me do here. We're just gonna fold that scrap fabric over and we are going to only lightly press down because we don't want to melt the rubber on the wire. After it is secure in there, you are going to stitch all the way around that wire very closely. And that's why I use a zipper foot I don't want the wire to shift around a lot. I just want it to be stable. Cut off any side excess fabric. Find the middle of the wire and go ahead and snip into the fabric, being careful not to snip any of the seams that you just made. Let's attach the nose piece to the inside of the mask. Just so that we get this right, let's imagine that right side of the fabric touching your face. Now the next piece that goes on is going to be the cushioned part of the nose piece that we just made. Sometimes I mix it up and end up with the wire toward my face and you don't want that. The cushioned side should be up against the wrong side of the fabric that goes toward your face. Once you line the nose piece up with the inside of the mask, you are going to clip it and then sew just a straight stitch across the top like you see here. Let's attach the two pieces together. We're going to line it up seam to seam. We're going to clip it, but still we're only going to sew just across the top where the nose piece is. Once sewn, it looks like this. Looks like a little hinge holding it all together. Next, we are going to take both side areas and fold them toward the wrong side of the fabric, as you see me do here, about a half an inch each, and we are going to iron a crease there. Do this to both wing areas. Tie a small knot on the end of each of the comfort elastic. Take the loop end and put it inside of your mask with the knots hanging out over the creased area that you made initially when you turned it back a half an inch, we want the knot to be inside of the mask. So this is how it has to be done. Then you're going to lay your heat bond over top of both those knots and then lay that other creased area over top, being sure to stay away from the quarter inch seam allowance area on the sides there. And we're going to bond these two pieces together. Now we are going to do the other side. Again, put the loop area toward the inside, hang the knots over that creased area, just like you see me do here. Take a piece of heat bond, lay it over top of the knots, then lay that piece over, being sure that the knot is on the one side of the crease, and then you're going to iron that together and it will bond. It should look something like this. 
Now it's time to stitch around the mask, being sure to leave an opening at the bottom so we can turn it right side out. When sewing the seam along the wing area, be sure that the knot will be on the outside of the mask. You don't want to sew on it or the other side of it, otherwise your knot will show. The only difference in seam allowance on this mask is the wing area and it is at a half an inch. It is at that crease mark that you initially made with the iron. Now trim off any extra bulk at the nose area. Now turn your mask right side out, being sure to push all the corners out. Find the opening that you left open and iron that only. Remember, we have that heat bond still in the center, so don't iron anything else but that area that needs to be sewn down that's open. Before I sew things shut, I'm finger pressing the entire mask to get it where I want everything to go because once I put heat to the middle of this, that's it, it's over. Now sew things shut. Now it's time to tend to that heat bond that's in the middle. You're going to take the ham and put the mask over top of it nicely, being sure there's no creases within your fabric because we want everything to lay as nice as it possibly can. So I'm turning it inside out at this point and I'm going to iron it on the other side too because I want to make sure that it has a really good bond. Here I'm going to give the mask a really good press all around just to make sure that everything is where it needs to be. Remember, subscribe, like, and share this video. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.